The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome on a beautiful, beautiful morning. Thanks to all who came and donated blood this last week. 61 units were gathered. Um, it, was, um, it took place within here uh, because downstairs was uh, unusable, but it worked. It worked. With a lot of help, it worked. Uh, thanks to all those who are helping downstairs, too. Uh, we're saving a load of money with using our own uh, uh, volunteers, our own talent, and, and it's looking good down there. If you didn't come uh, into the building uh, from downstairs, you might want to check out the progress that has been made. Um, uh, more to come on that. Order of service today is Divine Service Setting 1, page 151, opening hymn, From All That Dwell Below the Skies, 816. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. 
Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. <coughs> for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son Jesus as the heavenly bread of life. Grant us faith to feast on him in your word and sacraments, that we may be nourished unto life everlasting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is from Exodus chapter 16. And the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. 
for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling, that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. And Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 145, all your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and to make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and kind in all his works. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food. You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 4. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he, had, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean that, but that he also descended into the lower regions, the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children 
tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread of the Lord, after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? When did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. And they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith the night. Nice I'm sorry, we sing the hymn of the day.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Sermon text from the Gospel lesson. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. That's quite a promise. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Hunger and thirst are universal experiences. We feel both of them every day. No matter how many times you go back to the buffet line, no matter how many times you refill your cup, the satisfaction never really lasts. Eventually, you're going to get hungry again, and thirsty again. We are always hungering for something. Even when our bellies are full, we are always hungering for something. As the song goes, we can't get no satisfaction. And so it was 2,000 years ago. Jesus had been preaching and teaching and healing in the towns and countryside of Galilee, but it was time for a much needed breather. So he says to his disciples, come away with me to a quiet place together and let's get some rest. They hop into a boat and cross the Sea of Galilee, likely to the eastern shores, desolate and remote compared to the western shores. But the crowds see where he's heading and they walk along the shoreline following the trajectory of his boat, meeting him on the far side. When Jesus sees them as sheep without a shepherd, he can't help himself. He has compassion on them and he starts healing them and teaching them. The disciples are less than enthusiastic they figure that because they are in a remote area and there's no place for the crowd to buy food, they, then it's time to send them on their way. Of course, this leads to the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, which he manages with just five loaves of bread and two fish. Matthew 14, 20, all ate and all were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. After this, he tells his disciples to get in the boat and go to the other side again while he stays back and dismisses the crowd and then he moves himself to a mountain to pray by himself. But as it always does, the next day, their hunger returns. The crowds decide to look for Jesus again. Once they find him, they ask, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus cuts to the chase, as is his habit. You are looking for me because you ate the loaves and had your fill. What's there not to like about it, after all? Sitting there on a grassy hillside next to the Sea of Galilee, eating what was probably the best bread that they ever tasted. They didn't even have to wait in line. Disciples brought it to them. When my mom pulls out all the stops and prepares a really nice meal for the family, someone will inevitably ask, so what time would you like us to come over tomorrow night? It gets an easy laugh, but this crowd of thousands, they're not laughing. This was serious business. Malnourishment was an everyday possibility then. Meals didn't come as readily or predictably. So this crowd is seriously thinking it'd be nice to have a regular picnic like this. That's the thing about miracles. Once you've had one, you always want another. If he fed you once in a miraculous way, why would he choose not to feed you again? After all, it was no skin off his back. If he healed you once in a miraculous way, why would he choose, you, choose not to heal you a year later? Miracles are hard on us. They're like potato chips. You can't have just one. We always want more. This time, however, Jesus offered more than just loaves and fishes. He offered food that does not perish, but rather endures to eternal life. The people heard this literally. They liked the sound of this food and asked him how to get it. That's when Jesus spoke the promise for the, this week's sermon. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. You and I are constantly searching. Searching for a happier home life. 
searching for medical treatment that will work, searching for recognition and respect, searching for the best deal or the best brand when we're in the market to buy, searching for more vacation, more income, more security, searching for more popularity at school or more visits from our grown children and grandchildren. We're always searching for something. The problem, of course, is that all the things we search for are perishable. They don't last. Makes me think of the Olympics. If you got a gold medal in Rio, you're going to want one from Tokyo, too, right? The hunger returns. It's never quite a lasting satisfaction. One season's success does not satisfy. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, Jesus said, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. When Jesus promises he can relieve hunger and thirst for good, he's talking about more than food or drink. Luther calls this a spiritual hunger. Sometimes I think you and I, or if you're like me, um, you raid the refrigerator to satisfy a spiritual hunger. And that never works. There's only one thing that can satisfy this hunger. It is the Lord Jesus himself. He alone is imperishable. All our other hungers are for perishable things. He alone is imperishable. Romans 6, for we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. That's what we're after. That's what we need. In John 10, Jesus promises that all who come to him will live abundantly. The thief comes only to kill and steal and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Jesus is the bread that satisfies, the only bread, really. All this does not mean that we'll always be happy and satisfied with everything in this life. Rather, it means our desires will be shaped by him and satisfied by him. Psalm 37, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. On this, Augustine wrote, distinguish the desires of your heart from the desires of your flesh. Distinguish as much as you can. Jesus, the bread of life, promises satisfaction when we come to him in faith. He once told the crowd, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and righteousness, his righteousness. All these things will be given to you as well. In our Old Testament lesson, God promised, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. And he did. First with the manna, and then with his son, Jesus. He was born in Bethlehem, which literally means the house of bread. Later, he takes five small barley loaves and breaks, two, breaks them and distributes them. And no matter how much he gives away, there's always more to give. All ate, all were satisfied. The next day he says, do not labor for food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life. I am the bread of life. And then later still, he takes the Passover bread and, and breaks it and gives it to his disciples, declaring it is his body for them, for us. In the bread and wine, he becomes our food and drink, our forgiveness, our salvation, one for us on the cross. This is our manna in the desert. This is our sustenance for the journey until we cross over into the promised land. This bread carries the freight of the Lord's body and with it his grace and forgiveness 
and salvation. As we eat and drink from the body and blood of Christ, our mortal bodies become united with the risen Christ. Our deaths then, when we die, doesn't mean oblivion, but rather communion with him. Not destruction, but passage to life. He indeed is the bread of life. <clears throat> this is good news for us because that day is coming sooner than we ever think when you and I will learn that our own resources are depleted, that we've reached deeply into our own physical and intellectual, emotional, maybe even financial resources, and there's nothing left. We spent all we had. That day is coming when we realize, perhaps for the very first time, our hands are truly empty. And the only thing left for us to is acknowledge that truth and throw ourselves on the mercy and grace of God. And he has bread to give, the bread of life. That day doesn't belong to deprivation and hunger and thirst and death. It belongs to him, to Jesus, the bread of life. And the last day when he returns, that day is coming soon too, sooner than we think. We will hear the blast of the trumpet and the thunder of his voice commanding us out of our graves. That day approaches when we will be given new bodies, new joints, new muscles, new ears and lungs and heart and teeth and taste buds. It struck me this morning, however good food can taste today. It's going to taste so much better in heaven. And we will sit at table with him and all the saints and feast on the banquet of good things he provides. All will eat. All will be satisfied. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. And whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand to confess our faith in the Nicene Creed, page 158. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In our prayers, we pray for the family of Robert Wheeler, um, husband of Barb Wheeler. Robert died this last week. His funeral takes place tomorrow at 11 a.m. Visitation preceding at 10 a.m. takes place here. We pray also for Del A. Strike, Pastor John Zichlag, Phyllis Zelmer, Josephine Pershing, Dorothy Wagner, Burl Beely, Pastor Mike Schempf. And we pray in Thanksgiving, uh, Paul's Astro requested this prayer. As you know, there were tornado uh, activity, there was tornado activity in Watertown and surrounding areas this last week. 
One of those who suffered damage was Paul's Astro. His home suffered significant damage and also his, his property. Um, he walks with a walker, so he was not able to retreat to the basement. He sat and watched this happen outside his window, watched a tree come down on his sunroom with the light of the lightning. And he was just so grateful that uh, there were no injuries, no loss of life with him or anyone else. Um, he said, I, I told him the, the, the sound and such, it must have been terrifying. And he said, Pastor, I just sat and prayed and I actually had peace. Um, remarkable. Um, and uh, so thanks, uh, a prayer of thanks that no one was injured and a prayer of thanks for all who have turned out to help people clean up after, after the uh, destruction. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Heavenly Father, as you provided for the Israelites during their journey through the wilderness to the land you had promised, Give us confidence to trust in your promises and to look to your hand to provide all we need for this life and for the life to come. Lord, in your mercy. Master of the vineyard, sustain those you send into your harvest. Give your blessing to pastors, teachers, Christian leaders, and all who abide in your word that they would be enabled to work diligently and faithfully for your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. God and Father of all, enable us to walk in humility, gentleness, patience, that we would bear with one another in love and be eager to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all, hear our prayers for the hungry and the homeless. Provide for them not only bread to satisfy their hunger, but above all, the true bread of life, Jesus Christ, who alone can fill and satisfy every need of body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, show your mercy to the sick and to the hospitalized, Lord, and to those who are grieving, especially the Wheeler family. Provide doctors and nurses and other medical professionals to care for those who need health and healing. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you, dear Lord, for the safety you provided to the people of Watertown and surrounding areas. Thank you for the peace that you provided to Paul. In spite of the the roar of the tornado and the lightning and and thunder and and the destruction, you give peace. Thank you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Father in heaven, sustain the proper use of the sacraments among us, that your church would continue to be blessed with your gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation through the waters of holy baptism and through the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you've given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <clears throat> Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.